Right, the Lego brick. Um, I'm not saying this is the correct way to do it, um, but it's the way I would uh, do it. Um, you should by now have actually taken your brick and measured with a set of verniers. Um, and my brick may be slightly different from yours. And they may be little odd numbers because you've got to allow um, for shrinkage uh, as part of the moulding process. So I've got this window going at the moment. So I'm going to go to my parts. I'm going to create a new part and just wait for it to uh, tick over. Computer's a little bit slow. Come on. Right, there we go. And I'm going <coughs> to start. Um, you'll see the planes come up in a second. Uh, okay, let's go to sketch. Sketch. Okay, there's my planes. I'm going to go in the top plane. And I'm actually going to go with the rectangular tool because the brick is uh, rectangular. So right in the centre there. Just pull it out to roughly the shape. Select. Now I'm going to give this some dimensions. So just zooming in. I'm going to go to smart dimensions. And from my calculations, the... Um, this side I have got at 15.8. Um, so I had to do 0 0.2 um, of a, uh, a millimetre. Um, if it's odd numbers, I'll try and steer away from those. And I've got 31.8. Uh, yes, it's an odd number, um, but it's near enough 32, as that one is near enough 16. When I say odd numbers, I mean things like um, 0.19 or something. You just round it up to 0.2 um, uh, with those from your measurements. So I've got the actual basic brick there. So I'm just going to go to Features and I'm going to Extrude Boss Base. I'm just going to turn on its side. I'm going to change that. And I think uh, for mine it was 9.6. Again, yours may vary slightly. Um, it's just an exercise to show you some uh, little bits. So that's fine. So now, there we go, I've got my basic brick um, on there. So to start with, um, I'm going to go underneath the brick and I'm going to hollow it out. There's several ways you can do this. Um, I can either go to sketch, sketch, and then um, just offset uh, the um, wall thickness by 1.5 and then extrude out. But I'm going to show you the shell command. So just go to features. And up here you'll see there's a word shell. So click on shell and it's got their 10 as the default. I'm going to change that to 1.5 and it's asking me for the surface to take away. So I'm just going to click on that there. Now if I, got, if I show preview you'll see um, there is a little yellow box and that's telling me what it's going to take away, what it's going to show it out to. So I quite like that so I'm just going to do that. I can always go back and change it. Uh, that's not a problem. So now I've got the innards of it. So while I'm here, I'm going to do the top um, small little buttons. So again, um, I'm going to go to sketch, sketch, um, and I'm going to click on that surface. It didn't actually pick up, so I'm just going to sketch on that surface, and I'm going to do some circles. Um, what I should probably have done here, I'm just going to do uh, four. And I'll show you why in a sec. So let's just do four on that. Okay, what I should have done here um, is actually put in a, um, a, a a sort of boundary marker for where these need to go, uh, these to, need to go in because I've got I've taken a measurement from the outside. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to my uh, corner rectangle tool again, and I'm just going to go from there down to about there. Okay, and I'm just going to um, smart dimension um, that from there to there. That's 1.5 it should be. Now again, I could just go in an offset from uh, that line there. So I'm just going to do that one again. Okay, bring that down there. Do that 1.5. Okay, and I'll do the same from there to there. At 1.5, and I shall go from there to there. Do that at 1.5. So I now know I've got the sort of outer perimeter where my circles need to be. Um, but what I need to do to these lines is actually change them to construction. So if I click within the box that's highlighted, 
you'll see this little window pops up. So I'm going to change that to construction geometry and you'll see it's all gone dotted. That just means it won't appear um, when I do stuff. Now I also know that these circles here, dimension, let's just see what did I have down for those um, across, uh, 4.9. Now I know what I said, um, I'm just going to double check that on my vernis that I have in front of me. Um, and that would be shrinkage. Yeah, it's 4.93 or 90. I'm going to stick with that. Um, no, because there's something else in here that you need to take account of, but I'll talk about that another time. Um, and that is basically draft angle, which allows it to get out of the, uh, the, the mold. Now what I'm doing, I'm holding the shift key down, and I'm selecting all these circles. And I'm going to let go of the uh, shift key and a little sign over here saying equal. Make those circles, all those circles are now 4.9. Press escape key. I'm just going to click on there, on there, and uh, let go again. That's the shift key I was holding down. And I should do the same again. So escape, press that one and that one, and then do the tangential relationship. So I know, know that's in the right place. And I'm going to do the same for this bottom one. So click on there, click on there, go tangential, and I'm going to go on there, on there, let go of the shift key, tangential. So I've now got two in the right place. I also know that these form a square. So all I'm going to do now is go on to that rectangle tool again. You can see there's different ones there. The corner rectangle tool. And this time I'm going to draw from that point and out. So it's uh, there. Okay, I'm not quite square there. But all I'm going to do is click on that line there because that's between the two points. Click on that one there and I'm going to press uh, equal and I've now got my square. So I now have the centers for my other circles to go in. Now what I can do is just hover over that center and see it changes. Click on it, hold it, drag it and drop it. And I'm going to do the same on this one. Pick it up and drop it. Now I need to do the same again here. Click in there and I need to change that to construction geometry. Now, so what I could also do here now is actually draw a center line down the center uh, from that point there to there, okay, and then mirror those across. I'll do that and then I'll show you underneath the other way of, of doing it. So all I'm gonna do here is go up to mirror entities, and this is in the sketch profile, it's entities to mirror. So I'm gonna click on that one, that one, that one, and that one. And it's asking me to mirror about. I put that center line in. So I'm just going to click on that center line and you can see it's gone across and they're all fine. So I've got that sort of mapped out. I then go to features and I'm going to go to extrude boss base um, to a height of 1.8 millimeters. Now you see that has actually remembered my last figure. But I need to change that to 1.8 and make sure the merge results there because it's going to go to the top and I'll click on, so I click on the green tick to say right. So I now have the basis of um, my uh, Lego brick. If I just click out there, you can see that and I've got the underside. Now if you look at your um, Lego brick, you'll see you actually have circles on the inside um, there. Now the outer diameter is 4.9. I actually guesstimated because I couldn't get my verniers in, that the inner circles um, are actually 3.5. So let's draw those in. And this time I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same um, kind of thing. Um, I'm just going to go to sketch, sketch, and I'm going to pick that surface because it's a planar surface. Okay, and but this time I'm just going to change my visibility on this, and I'm going to go down from that there, and I'm going to go hidden lines. The reason why is I can pick up on those centers of those circles. So go to sketch circle and you'll see in a sec, there it is, that's my center. Click out there, I'll do that on that one. I'll just do these on four because I'll show you the other way of uh, mirroring across, mirroring features. There we go, got those there. So again, as I did with the last one, smart dimension, 
click on the inner circle, not far off, and go 3.5, okay, and then press the escape key, click on the circle I've just dimensioned, hold the shift key down, and select all the other circles one by one, let go of the shift key and just say equal, and you'll see that they've all moved up to the um, correct size for that. So just give that a, a tick. Now this time, okay, I need to extrude cut. So I'm not going to extrude out and extrude cutting. So go to features, I go to extrude cut. Okay, I'm actually going to bring back uh, my uh, visual. So go to that one. Okay, and what I want to do this time is I want to offset it by 1.5 from that top surface. So cut extrude from the sketch plane that I've been drawing on and the direction I want to go down until it says offset from surface. And I want to change that to 1.5 and I'm going to select that top surface there. Now what you'll see is it's actually gone in a little bit uh, to do that. There are reasons why this is done with plastic injection moulding is to sh stop um, shrinkage um, and sinkage um, on that and I can talk about that uh, a lot again. Um, I did talk about um, the fact that we can actually put draft angle in. I'm not going to on this one but I'll talk about that another time when you come to do the plug. Um, normally between 1 and 3% um, variation. I'll just quickly show you what happens here. I don't know if I've just got a view um, on that one. So if I do that there, if I go on to that tab there and I want one degrees, let's do two. If I do that, you can see that circle at the top getting smaller. So I don't want six degrees. I'll, I'll leave it back at zero, I'll switch it off. But normally you would put about one degree in. It's just so the tool can be pulled out. So I'm going to give that a green tick. And if I go underneath, you'll see that I have now hollowed out that um, small section there. Now, to do the feature one, I can't use a center line. So what I've got to do is go to reference geometry and I want to stick a new plane in to use that as my mirror plane. And it's asking me for three points of contact. So I know that's a center. I know this one is a center. Okay, and it's just looking for one more that one so just right hand click so I now have a plane uh, in there I've added another plane um, to the front plane the top plane and the right plane if I wanted to switch on the other planes to actually view them I just go to my little eye and click on that and you can see the other planes have come in so all I've done is put a plane across that sensor on that I'm just going to switch those off again so I don't uh, I have a tidy drawing so all I need to do now Let's go to features and go to mirror. I don't need to sketch or anything because the feature is already there. And it's asking me for mirror face plane. So I'm going to click on the plane I've just put in. And it's asking me for secondary mirror. I don't need it. So all I'm going to do now is go on to uh, features to mirror. Now I can either just click on that there and you'll see they all go across. Or what I could have done is gone into the design tree and actually gone on to the uh, cut extrude. It's just a quick and easy way of doing it and you'll find the best way that you like to work. So I'm happy with what I've selected. I've got partial preview, it looks right. So I'm gonna do the green tick. So that's my underneath part. So I'm almost getting there and this plane will come in useful uh, later on. Now, what I also see here is I've got three um, tubes uh, that I need to construct. Now what I can do is either go back and draw in that base there or I can pick this section as a plane. It doesn't really matter. And for now, I am not using any draft angle. So it, do, it does not matter at all. So I'm gonna to go to sketch. Okay, and it's asking me for face plane. I'm gonna pick the top one because I think, yes they are, they're flush with the top. You can take a ruler and try and see if it does it or not. So I'm gonna, that top surface there, and then what I'm going to do is create, I think these are centers in between here, which again is a great help. So I'm just going to put a circle there, circle there. I know that one's definitely center and a circle sometime around about there. Now to get the other centers, all I'm going to do is go to my line, go to center line, 
pick up on that there and go down to that centre line there and you'll notice it's actually giving me a choice of different lines to do. So I just right hand click select and if I pick this up I should find that on centre. So I know that's in the right place. I know this one's in the right place. I know they're not the same, the right sizes for now but we could sort that in a minute. Oh, nearly made a mistake there. Um, and go to centre line and then go from there down to the centre of this one. Okay, and if I just pick this and drop it onto there, it snaps to it. Now these circles should be, I don't think, yeah, that's snapped to that one. Those circles, I think, if I just mark dimension, the middle one. Okay, that outer diameter, uh, which I hadn't written down, so I'll just, with my trusty verniers, give an outer measurement, and roughly it's, Around about 6.5 outer dimension. I'll just check that on the others. 6.47 and 6.56. So I'm going to go, let's see, let me just take the center one again. 6.5. So let's do those at 6.5. Okay, that's gone out. It looks about right and it looks fairly um, spready, though I don't think that's, we, we shall see in a second. So let's just. Um, Select that circle there, hold the shift key down, select that one and that one. And let's just make those equal. Okay, this one as you can see is actually not centered there. So what I can do here again using the shift key, if I select that center there, hold the shift key, center of that one, you can see it's higher and that one. And if I just go up to here, it says make horizontal and you see it's dropped down. So they're all now absolutely um, spot on. Now I could just extrude those out and then shell them or hollow them out but what I'm going to do is just measure the wall thickness of the inner side. It's 0.8 per millimetre. So all I'm going to do is go up to uh, offset entities and I'm going to put in there one, sorry 0.8 of a millimetre and hopefully that should come reverse. I have to do each one individually I think. I'll just double check. No, I can do them all. Okay, and then right hand click. And if I go to features and I go to extrude boss base, and it's asking me to select as, as the old offset from surface. I want to go up to surface this time, and I want to select that inner one there, and you can see there, and I've got select contours. And if I just hover over there, that's where it goes red, goes red, goes red, and there. So there I have my very very basic, I've missed something, Lego brick but there's a lot to finish off. Now there's a lot to take in but you'll notice in your brick there is a rib that goes across um, there. Now I could just draw that in extrude out but what I'm going to do is just show you there is actually a rib command. So if I um, and I think that rib is approximately, if you just bear with me one second. It's put, no, it's not, uh, sorry, it's far too high. Right, that drops about 0.2 of a millimetre below this surface here. So again, what I'm going to do to try and get that accurate, so if I go to a reference joint, to go to plane, and what I want to do is click on that surface there, which is a plane, and you'll see the default is 10 mil above. I want to go 0.2, but I want to go below, so I'm going to flip that offset. So it's 0.2 of a millimetre below, and you can just see that. I actually think that distance is a bit more than 0.2. Let me just try and measure that once more. That's better. No, actually, no, that's not right. Let me zero my vernius. Let's try once more. Oh, it would help if I switched them on. Zero my vernius, that's what I should say. As I always say, measure once, measure twice, and if you have to, measure a third time. All right, that's that little rib. 2.4, so actually I was 0.2, so actually I'm going to change that to 2.4. And that's quite a drastic drop. Um, I can always change it if it's wrong later on. So this time I've done that. 
I'm going to go to sketch. Okay, go to my um, that one, and it's selected the plane I've just put. And I'm going to draw a line. Let me just double check here. From about there to there, I'm going to do another line. Um, let's go select. So line from there to there. Now these are a little bit inaccurate, so I'm just going to go back to my view. Now I've just pressed space bar to get this, but what you want to do is make sure that view selector is done and it makes it a lot easier to do it. Now you can see they are nowhere near place. I want that to there. I've lost the other one and I want that. Let's go to the center. I want that and that to be there. Okay, and I'll do the same on this side. So that and let's try that one. There we go. So that's gone to the center by automatic. I don't want that to happen. So just delete that, come back and hold the shift key down, select the outer ring and press select. Okay, so I've got two lines in there. Um, one is still blue because it hadn't attacked this one. So let's just do that. Okay, that should have gone black. No, it hasn't. Okay, it's because it's not horizontal. So if I just click on the blue line, click on that one and make sure that that is that it should have gone. No, still not. Okay, why is it gone? Uh, why is it not uh, blue? Let me just see what's going on here. Ah, okay, right. What I need to do is actually get it onto the plane. So that and that select make collinear. Perfect. That now should be black. Okay, so what I need to do now is go to features, so the sketch and go to rib. And it's already selected those two, but it's got the width of 10 millimeters. I would put this in at 0.4. Okay, uh, it's asking me for direction. I think I'm okay, but it should give me that little pre um, preview. Oh, it's got uh, double sided on that. Um, yeah, thickness is 0.4. So actually, if I put that down at 0.2, that'd be 0.4. So that's about right. Um, natural, uh, that's fine. Contours we've already selected. So it's that one and that one. And I'll just right hand click. And there we go. You can see the rib has now gone down um, to that. Now to finish this off for now, what I would do, um, because I'm a little bit like that. Um, I'll come back and do the naming of Lego on top um, in a bit, but I would go to um, my fillet tool on features on there. And if I click, uh, you see the default is 10. I'm gonna put it in a 0.2. And I'm just gonna go around these surfaces um, is really it going to do it for me? I don't know at the minute. So I've selected fillet type. It's probably because I can't see it and I haven't got preview selected. Partial preview. There we go. So there we go. Going to do that one. It should do it. Let's see if this does. Filleting is probably one of the most frustrating things out to do. I could do it by surface. I just want to show you the top surface. Okay, yeah, so I've got that there. And I could do the same again. Uh, like so, so, that's inside. So if I click that one underneath, um, this might not have joined. That's oh, because I've got that there. Right, let me just clear this to see edge. Right, if I do that as a face, don't, that as a face, that as a face, um, these may not have joined, so let's, have a look. let's just see what this does. Yeah, so it's done them all there for you. So that's my Lego, almost, and I can do the same on the inside um, on that. Now, there is a way of doing, uh, getting Lego on there, but I will do that as a separate video. But if you can get that back up um, to this kind of standard, um, then we will be good to go. And again, I'll put little fillets um, elsewhere as well. Okay, so that is the basics of the uh, um, of the Lego brick. I'm just going to switch off.
those. So there we go, you can see that there. Good. All right, I shall see you in the next video.